once again we are back together all right so today we are just going to look at some past exam questions on stoichiometry so please if you haven't subscribed do the right thing just make sure you hit that subscribe button and of course your favorite uncle will continue to give you some good content in maths as well as science okay right so i'm going to look at this past exam question paper right or past exam question rather right so it's based off of uh, limiting reagents as well as calculating the volume of a gas so let's look at it so they say learners made a mini volcano in a science laboratory by adding sodium bicarbonate to ethanoic acid they use uh, they added rather a hundred milliliters right so we know we've got hundred milliliters there Right, so please remember that when it comes to volume, we always use cubic decimeters, liters, for those of you that are international students, right, or even in university, right, you, we use liters, right, but in this case, they say uh, 100 milliliters of a 0 0.2 moles per cubic decimeter uh, of ethanoic acid uh, solution of 10 grams uh, of sodium carbonate to start the reaction of the volcano. Right, so they say the balanced equation for this reaction is given. All right, so note in this case, we they say to us this is balanced, so we are absolutely fortunate for that. Now, they say define the term limiting reagent. So remember, in this case, we say that the limiting reagent is the substance that would limit the extent of the reaction, all right? Um, you can also find other definitions, right? That's not my focus for this lesson, right? So determine the limiting reagent of this reaction. Now, ladies and gents, if you've watched my videos, right, you'd know how to do this, right? So firstly, we were given ethanoic acid, right? We're given 10 grams there, okay, of this guy. And we are also given the concentration and the volume of... Uh, Oh, actually, we are given the concentration and the volume of ethanoic acid, which is this guy. And we're given 10 grams of sodium hydrogen carbonate, which is bicarbonate of soda, right? So in this case, what we need to do, remember in chemistry, we always work with moles, right? So let's first determine how many moles of um, ethanoic acid do we have, right? So we are given concentration. So we know that number of moles is concentration. In fact, the formula says concentration is number of moles divided by volume, right? So therefore, it means that number of moles will be concentration times volume. Our concentration value is 0 0.2, okay? And the volume is 100 milliliters. Now, we uh, need to convert this into liters cubic decimeters so we need to divide that by a thousand right so for that volume we say a hundred okay so that's going to be a hundred divided by one thousand okay so that gives us 0 0.1 cubic decimeters so that's what we have for the volume of the gas right or of the um uh, ethanoic acid so that's 0 0.1 there and so that's 0 0.2 times 0 0.1, and that will give us 0 0.02 moles. So these are the moles of uh, ethanoic acid that we have, right? So let's see. With the moles that we have, how much... I'm just going to use carbon dioxide, if you don't mind. Ne? So how much carbon dioxide can we ideally produce if assuming that we were going to utilize all of those moles of acid, right, uh, of the ethanoic acid. So I'm going to use my stoichiometric ratio and I can see, well, for every one mole of ethanoic acid, I will produce one mole of carbon dioxide. So if for every one mole of ethanoic acid, right, I produce one mole of carbon dioxide, then it goes without saying that if I use, actually this was COOH, 
right? Then it goes without saying that if I use 0 0.02, then I should produce 0 0.202 moles of carbon dioxide. Why? Because our ratio is the same, right? You can cross multiply and you'll see that the number of moles of carbon dioxide that you can, and I'm not saying will, it will depend on which one is the limiting reagent that you can produce is 0 0.02 moles, right? Now, let's see. Let's find out. With the amount of sodium hydrogen carbonate that we've got, right? How many moles of carbon dioxide can we produce? Whichever one will give us a smaller number of moles, that will be a limiting reagent. It means that's the one that's going to be uh, dictate what happens in our reaction. All right. Okay. I'm just looking for some more space there. Right. So in this case, let's now use um, the sodium hydrogen carbonate. We're given the mass, right? And please remember, ladies and gents, when we have the mass, we're going to use number of moles is mass divided by molar mass. Now we can determine the molar mass of sodium hydrogen carbonate on the side, right? So we know we've got uh, sodium is 23, right? That's why we have that periodic table uh, so that if you need to make reference to it, so we've got sodium, we've got hydrogen, which is one, we've got uh, um, carbon, which is 12, and we've got oxygen, which is 16, right? So in this case, we know sodium hydrogen carbonate. Please note, ladies and gents, whenever you are working out the molar mass, you do not multiply by the coefficient. So what I'm trying to say to you is that, say perhaps if there was a two there as a coefficient, you do not multiply by that number, please, under no circumstances. Right, please keep that in mind. So we're going to say, well, sodium is 23 plus, okay, we are adding hydrogen, we've got one atom of hydrogen, we've got one atom of carbon, that's 12, but we've got three atoms of oxygen, so that's plus three times 16, so in this case, what do we have, right, so we add all of that up, so 24, that's going to be uh, 36, all right, so remember three times 16, all right, uh, that's going to be 48, right? So this guy gives me 48, all right, let's just calculate it quickly. That's 23 plus 1 plus 12 plus the 48, that gives us 84, right? So we know that the molar mass of uh, sodium hydrogen carbonate is actually 84 grams per mole. So let's take the mass, the mass is 10 grams, divided by 84, and in this case, what do we get? So we're going to take 10 divided by 84, I get 0 0.1, well, look, I'll uh, round off to two decimal places, I'll say 0 0.12 moles. So this is 0 0.12 moles of sodium hydrogen carbonate. Now, with these moles that we've got, how many moles of, oxy, uh, of carbon dioxide would we produce? Now, going back to the reaction, right? Again, for every one mole of this guy, right, I will get one mole of carbon dioxide. So, which means if I use all the moles, the 0 0.12 moles of uh, sodium hydrogen carbonate, right, I would be able to produce 0 0.12 moles of carbon dioxide. But now, ladies and gents, I can only produce 0 0.12 for as long as ethanoic acid allows me to, right? So you'll see now, then it means that which one is the limiting reagent? So notice for every one mole of sodium hydrogen carbonate, ideally, I would be able to produce one mole of carbon dioxide. So uh, with 0 0.12 moles, how many moles of carbon dioxide would we make? So you'll see that the number of moles of carbon dioxide would be 0 0.12 moles. 
Now note which one gives me the lesser number of moles. It's definitely ethanoic acid. So therefore, it means ethanoic acid is our limiting reagent. What does that mean, ladies and gents? It means even if the amount of uh, sodium hydrogen carbonate by carbonate of soda, right, even if it allowed me to produce 0 0.12, it can't because, um, uh, no, actually, yes, uh, the ethanoic acid only allows me to produce 0 0.02. Yes, I'd love to produce the 0 0.12, but this guy says, wait, I can only get to a maximum of 0 0.02 moles, right? So therefore, uh, they said determine the limiting reagent. We can now conclude that therefore ethanoic acid will be our limiting reagent, okay? Right, so there we go. So remember now, what does this mean? It means we can only, uh, in this case, uh, uh, produce as much as the limiting reagent allows me to, okay? Right, now let's go to the next point. They say to us, determine, uh, or rather calculate, the mass of the other substance in excess, right? So we know that if um, ethanoic acid is the limiting reagent, right? So therefore, it means that sodium hydrogen uh, carbonate will be in excess, in excess, right? So note in, uh, in this case, so we're now going to look for the amount of uh, 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 sodium hydrogen carbonate in excess, right? So, so that's, uh, that's question 6.3. So for 6.3, now that I know my limiting reagent, I will say, well, let's find out with the amount of ethanoic acid that I have, how much sodium hydrogen carbonate can I use, right? Or will it allow me to use, right? So I'm going to say my ratio says for every one mole of ethanoic acid, I will use, now the ratio, remember that still one is to one, okay? So for every one mole of ethanoic acid, I will use one mole of sodium hydrogen carbonate. So my limiting reagent says, look, I can only, I'm going to use 0 0.02 moles. I only have 0 0.02 moles. So therefore, how much sodium hydrogen carbonate will be required. So the amount of so, uh, uh, sodium hydrogen carbonate, okay, will be 0 0.02 moles. So these are the moles that will actually react. Okay, please, I hope you understand this, ladies and gents. So the limiting reagent will determine how much of the other reactants actually react, and it will also determine determine how much of the products we actually produce. Okay, right. Now, ladies and gents, we know that we are going to form 0. or we are going to use rather uh, 0 0.02 moles of the sodium hydrogen carbonate. So we want to find out how many moles would be in excess. So we'll take the number of moles, the initial number of moles. We'll set to subtract the ones that we used or the ones that reacted okay so from the initial remember we calculated that the sodium hydrogen carbonate the amount that we have is 0 0.12 from the mass that was given but we only used 0 0.02 because that's what our limiting reagent allowed us to right and so it means that 0 0.1 moles of sodium hydrogen carbonate will remain unused. It is the amount in excess, right? But remember, they did not want the number of moles. They wanted to find out what is, in this case, the mass, all right? So all we're going to do is say, well, number of moles, that's mass over the molar mass, 
So that means the mass will be number of moles multiplied by the molar mass. So that will be 0 0.1 multiplied by, now note the molar mass in this case would be uh, the one that we calculated for sodium hydrogen carbonate. We said it was 84 grams per mole. So we'll multiply that by 84. And so that will give us 8.4 grams. So which means 8.4 grams will remain unreacted. It will be in excess in this case. I hope that makes sense, ladies and gents. Right, as we go to the last portion of the question. Now they say to us, calculate the volume of carbon dioxide produced at STP. Right, now, remember we can only make uh, carbon dioxide, right, uh, as much carbon dioxide as my limiting reagent allows me to. And we've now established that our limiting reagent is uh, ethanoic acid, right? So we also found out that, well, with the amount of ethanoic acid that we have, it will only be able to produce, right, 0 0.02 moles of carbon dioxide. So now we are looking for the volume at STP, ladies and gents, right? So we said at STP, we know that the molar volume at STP will be 22.4 cubic decimeters per mole, right? How many moles are we going to produce? We said that's 0 0.02. We want the volume, right? And we know that the molar volume at STP, and this is always given, right, is 22.4. So, ladies and gents, if we cross multiply, V is 22.4 divided by, or rather multiplied by, so that's 22.4 multiplied by 0 0.02. And we get an amount of 0 0.448 if you want to, if we were restricted to um, two decimal places, we'll say 0 0.55 cubic decimeters. Please remember this, ladies and gents. That's how we always work out uh, the volume, right, given the number of moles. And just in conclusion, so remember what our roadmap looks like. We said we always uh, either work out the mass or it could be the volume, right, or it could be the concentration, depending on what's given. We always convert to moles, right? And we use our ratio to get the moles of what we want. And we can convert back into either mass, the volume, or concentration, or even particles for that matter, ladies and gents, right? Uh, we would use, in this case, uh, the number of particles, right? And essentially, that's how the cookie crumbles, right? Please look out for some more questions, uh, past exam questions that we will do in this section. Otherwise, from me for now, we will leave it there for today, right? I hope that you were able to understand. And please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and if you need assistance, please go to our website and also go into the description of this video. You'll get all our contact details there. I'll see you guys next time. Shop, shop.